Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today we're going to be reviewing Terry Goodkind, Stone of Tears, book number two in The Sword of Truth. Let's see, this came out in 1995. I've, you know, I've been buying these books. Well, I stopped buying them, honestly. I've only got think I got 10 of them in my collection. I stopped buying the series after a while. But when the series was being released back in the 90s, I was buying them one, one every year and reading them. Uh, only read them all once. I do remember liking them. Now I'm rereading them for my um, channel. Uh, so you can go see my review of Wizards First Rule elsewhere on my channel. Just type in my name, Brian Lee Durfee, and Terry Goodkind should come up. Anyway, <clears throat> we always talk about the covers first. So let's do that. This is a great painting by Keith Parkinson. Um, you know, on the hardcover and the original paperbacks, they had a, the, the painting was of, uh, covered the entire thing. They didn't have this goofy window. But so, um, you know, one of the reasons I've got this set now, now with, with the goofy black windows is because they all look good on me. My, the, my, my collection, I'll be honest, my collection of Terry Goodkind books, before I bought all of them in this format, and I've got them all, I'll show you here. I'll show you. I've got them all in um, this similar format here. Because they all look um, nice on the shelf like that. Before, my um, set was just a mishmash of hardcovers and paperbacks with all different types of... Anyway, you get why I did it. Any, uh, let's, let's move on from the covers. Keith Parkinson does a great job. One other thing I wanted to mention about this series is, I, if, for, if you followed my channel long enough, you know that I've ran the, the, uh, all the libraries at the Utah State Prison. And by far, by far, the most popular fantasy series at the prison was the Sword of Truth. Not sure why, just was. I couldn't keep enough Sword of Truth books in the prison. They were just the most popular. Along with Robert McCammon's Swan Song and Bernard Cornwell's um, Saxon Tales. Those were the, that's the, those are the three writers that I just couldn't keep stocked in my prison. Anyway, let's move on. Let's do a review of the book. Enough about me. Let's review the book. So, starts out, this is the book that sold me on Terry Goodkind. I, I remember reading Weird Wizard's First Rule when I was younger and being like, that was decent, you know. It wasn't until book two came out and I read it that I was like, okay, I like this series now. I'm going to follow this series and, um, and I'm going to start collecting this series. And I did. This was the book that sold me. I think this is where the sort of truth really sort of finds its legs. I think that the wizard's first rule was a good starting point, but spotty, this one is pretty solid throughout, as as are the next, you know, however many I've got in my collection. Uh, starts out with a great scene between Rachel, Zed, and Chase, where they're fighting a Skraling, which is one of the baddies in this universe. And then we move to the Mud People area where Richard and Kaylin are starting to, uh, they want to get married, so they're waiting for their marriage to happen. And while they're waiting, um, there's these three sisters of the light that show up. And, and at, the, at the same time, Richard has been suffering. Richard, our main character from The Wizard's First Rule, and Kaylin, they're our main characters throughout. So um, if you haven't read these books, just know that Richard and Kaylin are pretty much the protagonists throughout the whole series. Anyway, they're they're about to get married. The three sisters of the light show up. At the same time, Richard is having these debilitating headaches. And the three sisters of the light say, well, the only way to get rid of these headaches is we've got to take you to wizardry school. Kind of like Harry Potter. There's, the, uh, there's this place that we want to take you where you can learn to be a wizard because you know how to use subtractive magic and additive magic and all the, all the different types of magics and you've got the sword of truth and everything seems to be like, he's sort of like the Rand. He, it's kind of like the Aes Sedai trying to channel Rand. These, the, the, these women, that's what they kind of want to do. Not only do they do that, but they put a collar on him. It's like the only thing that's going to save you from your headaches is let us, 
Let us put this collar around your neck. That's not suspicious at all. No, that's not suspicious one bit. But he goes for it. He puts the collar around his neck. And yeah, it helps with the uh, headaches. But it's a fucking collar around your neck. Dude, come on. You don't think... <laughs> anyway. So anyway, uh, he refuses to go to wizardry school. And each time he refuses, one of the three sisters of the light commits suicide so that's alarming and so finally he's like well i don't want the last one her name is verna i don't want her to commit suicide so i'll go to this damn school if you want me to so he goes off to the school right he goes off to wizardry school and um i think it's called the school of the prophets i can't remember but there's a lot of things that happen and i, I mean this book is huge it's dense and full of plot and i'm probably giving away too much as it is but i know that they go into the underworld for a bit and then they go to wizardry school Kalen and richard get separated um richard is treated like a uh, king at wizardry school and uh, because he doesn't really want to be there he just was he feels like he's trapped there and he he wants to leave and he keeps telling him he wants to leave, but they keep making him feel so special. And then we even get to meet, this is one of my favorite, this is, I think it's when we met the creature Gratch, who is re represented by this little thing here. I don't think you can see it on the camera, but anyway, Gratch is this sort of golem like creature that befriends um, Richard. And that's, I think that at that point when I was reading it the first time, that's really where I started to really care for the characters quite a bit. Um, Gratch is just this, he's a gar, and his name is Gratch. He's just a lizardry, like a golem-like guy. And he sort of follows Richard around for a bit. And that's where the, the really the writing and the storytelling really started to resonate with me and started to sing. Because may, may, make no bones about it, Terry Goodkind knows how to write. He's a good writer. I know he takes a lot of shit in the... Uh, community in the fantasy community is being like i don't know what but people like to dump all over him a lot well let me tell you so there's a reason he sold millions and millions and millions of copies it's because he's a decent writer who can tell a good story about characters that people genuinely like and for some reason there's a lot of jealousy about that in the uh you know un unearned jealousy. i mean just people just like to poop on it for to be hip i mean i mean it's like the hipster thing Imagine if, you're, imagine if you're one of the types of people that has the hipster beard, the hipster clothes, and you hang out in coffee shops and Irish bars and pubs a lot. You would probably hate this. I can, I mean, I'm just stereotyping. Now, if you're a normal human, you're probably going to like it. Anyway, uh, Kaylin goes on her own journey. Now, she uh, runs into some, some characters... Uh, that have suddenly got amnesia, or their memory is lost, or their memory is deleted, which, believe it or not, this whole memory loss thing is sort of a theme that runs through all of the books. Like, later books, memory loss becomes a massive, massive plot point that runs through just a whole grip of the store books. And um, so it's kind of like uh, foreshadowed here with the whole memory loss Thing, which I did not remember the first time. And then when I was rereading it, I was like, oh, that's right. This is a foreshadow of the major, major memory loss plot point that's going to come seven or eight books down the road. So, uh, and then also we've got the Stone of Tears, which is a magic talisman that everything sort of revolves around. Um, and uh, that's, about, you know, that's about all I want to say about the book, just because... Um, that's got so many, it's got so much going on in it that just to recap it would just take forever. And this is a spoilery free thing, so we're not going to do that. So let's give the, uh, the uh, second Sword of Truth book, let's give it a uh, 8.5 out of 10, maybe a 9 out of 10. I mean, I think, I think most every fantasy fan would have no problems enjoying this book. It's got everything you would really want in a fantasy.